Okay, let's see if we can learn some basic probability in about 10 minutes. So this video might go a little bit longer than 10 minutes, but I'll try to keep it right around the 10 minute mark. And uh, probability, as you may know, is just a, such a common um, you know, concept in our everyday life. You know, we're just to think about the weather, right? Let's say, what's the chance is it's going to snow? We could sit, phrase that as, what's the probability it's going to snow? Uh, what's the probability that you're going to win the big lottery? Et cetera, et cetera. So we use this word and we know intuitively what it means, but uh, probability is a, uh, it's a huge topic in mathematics. What we're going to focus on just some simple introductory type of uh, concepts with probability uh, that I think you'll find pretty interesting. So hopefully you're going to stick around for the entire video. But uh, before we get into basic probability, let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, I have what I like to believe is one of the most robust, comprehensive online video uh, programs there is. So whether you need to take a full math course or you need assistance in your current math course, my math help program can help you. I'm going to leave a link uh, to that program in the description of this video. So you can check that out and you can make your uh, own judgments about my program. But I do have very, very comprehensive lessons, much more than what I do on YouTube, and I show you how to solve literally thousands and thousands of the most common math problems you're going to encounter at uh, various levels of mathematics. Now, before we get into this basic probability, let me just stress the importance of note-taking. Uh, clearly, you're interested in mathematics. If you're a math student, just know one thing. Over decades of teaching math is one thing that I strongly believe, and just seen this trend, those students who take the best math notes get the best math grades, and the reverse is true. So if you need to improve your math notes, make sure you do so. But in the meantime, if you don't have a good set of math notes, I actually have uh, excellent detailed comprehensive math notes. I'm going to leave a link to those in the description of this video as well. Those are going to include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, uh, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. Okay, let's get into basic probability. Okay, very cool uh, topic in mathematics. So again, you know, we use this word, you know, all the time, like probability, right? What's the probability it's going to snow? Maybe you use the word chances, all right? What's the chances it's going to snow? Or what's the odds of something happening? Pretty much the same concept, right? We're just trying to figure out what, you know, how likely is something going to uh, going to, you know, occur. You know, that's kind of what we're trying to figure out. So this obviously has practical, um, you know, uh, implications in our everyday life, okay? And of course, we you know, probability isn't a guarantee that something's going to happen. So we're just trying to get a feel for, you know, the chances or the odds of something occurring, okay? So let's go ahead and get a basic definition of probability, okay? So the probability of simple events. Now, uh, a simple event is just something very, very simple. There's all kinds of probability events that we can uh, study. So let me give you an example of a probability of a simple event, and then I'm going to show you something more complicated that you can um, uh, will, will kind of entertain a more complicated probability question that's not going to be, you know, we're not going to learn how to do that in this video, but I just want to make sure that you understand, you know, the difference between a simple event and something more uh, complicated. So so the probability of a simple event, we write this as P of E, just the probability of an, an event, okay, this is kind of a common notation, is equal to the number of number of times, all right, let me put this little S, number of times an event can occur, okay, over the total number of possible events, okay? So it's the number of time times an event, a particular event can occur, okay, over the total number of possible events. All right, now... Let's take a look at an example, and then I'll kind of circle back and give you an, ex uh, an example of something that's not quite a simple event, okay? All right, so here, let's say you have a jar here. You can see my little lovely jar, and inside my little jar I have A, B, C, and D kind of sitting in there, right? So what's the probability that when I reach in with my little hand that I select an A? Okay, so if I said if I had four things in there, and I just ask you, hey, what's the chances you're going to uh, pull out an A versus a B, C, and D? You would just probably already intuitively know that. Like you have uh, one out of four chances. But let's go by the definition. The number of times this can occur. Well, if I pull my hand in there, the number of times 
the uh, I can get an A, that can only happen once. Okay. If I had two A's, let's say I had an A and an A over here, then there's two ways I can pull out an A. I, mean, I could either get this A or that A, right? But there's only one A in here, so there's only one way I can um, get an A. But there's the number of uh, total number of possible events is I can get an A, B, C, or D. So there's four. Okay. So the probability of me selecting an A by putting my hand in this little jar is one over four. Okay. Now let's get some basic language or terminology out of the way. So here, these uh, things here, A, B, C, D, in this particular problem, this is a set. Okay. This is the set of all possible outcomes. All right. So that kind of represents this number, but this entire set of all possible outcomes is referred to as a sample space. Okay, so sample space is a common phrase in basic probability. So when you're learning probability, and if uh, something is so, if people are talking about the sample space, they're talking about what you're studying. So it could be maybe the population of the United States, right? If we're talking about what's the chances of a person, you know, a citizen of the United States that's in uh, in the United States uh, gets a whatever. Okay, your sample space is the population of the entire country. Okay, now let me go back as I uh, promised you. We're talking about the probability of simple events. What's now? What is not as uh, simple? So something would be uh, something a little bit more interesting on this particular problem would be what's the probability of me getting an A and then me getting a uh, D? Okay. So it's things like that, a little bit more involved. Or let's see, actually do it a little bit different. Let's say I was allowed to pull out two things at once. So what's the probability of me getting an A and D? Okay. So this is, you know, not much more, uh, ad, well, let's say advanced, but uh, we're, this is not what we're talking about in simple events. Okay. There's two different things going on. And when you study probability a little bit more in depth, you'll learn how to do things like this. Okay. So the probability of you getting an, an A and a D, or maybe a probability of get you getting an A or a D. Okay, so these are a little bit more complicated and involved concepts, you know, beyond the scope of this video. But again, when I use this term simple events, this is what we're talking about. Something real simple like this. Okay, so that's our definition of probability. All right, and uh, you probably already had a good feel for uh, that. And of course, we have this new term here, sample space. All right, let's go ahead and talk about how probability is measured. All right, so probability is measured between zero and one. Okay, we're talking about a fraction. So let's go back to this uh, little problem that we did. So the probability of us pulling out an A was one fourth. Okay, so one fourth is definitely between zero and one. But it's very uh, typical of us to um, write or express our probability as a percentage. So one fourth is the decimal 0.25, and we can write that 0.25 as a percent just by multiplying that by 100. So the probability of us pulling an A out of the jar would be equal to 25%. So this is probably the most common way to kind of think about it. Obviously, this is the answer, and they are equivalent, but it's very common for us to express our probability. You know, it's uh, certainly in practical everyday life in terms of percentages, right? So what's the chances of you pulling out an A from that jar? 25% chance. Okay, that's the probability, or 1 over 4. Okay, so, but just remember, probability is measured between 0 and 1. Now, here, let's go ahead and just qu uh, kind of reinforce this concept. So if the probability of an event occurring is 0, that means it's impossible, okay? So if you... Um, do your, you know, you figure out the probability of something, you know, and you get a zero, that means it's impossible. It cannot happen. Okay. So let's go to enter entertain that, uh, uh, reinforce this now. So let's ask ourselves, what's the probability of me here, pull my little hand in here. It's terrible. <laughs> and, but what's the probability of me pulling out an F from this jar? Hmm. Okay. I don't see an F. Right. Exactly. There is no ways that event can happen. Let's go back up here to our definition. 
Okay, the number of ways, the number of times that uh, you can pull an F out of the jar, okay, that's kind of how we would apply that for here, zero. Okay, so zero in the numerator makes our entire fraction zero. Okay, it's impossible, all right? Okay, so pretty intuitive. Now, uh, let's go ahead and uh, look at the other side of the coin, and that would be the probability of an event occurring if you, is, if you get that uh, if you do that mathematics and you get that equal to 1, that means it's absolutely certain that event will happen. So, for example, if I asked you, what's the probability of you getting an A, B, C, or D? Okay, well, that's going to be equal to 1 because there's four ways, okay, um, that can happen. Okay, there's four ways that can happen and there's four possible outcomes. So that is 1, all right? But just remember, probability is measured between 0 and 1. And it is very common to express our probability as a percentage. Okay, so let's keep moving here because I want to keep this within about 10 minutes. Now here, I'm going to leave you with uh, three main concepts really quick. But this is really, really important um, stuff in basic probability. So in probability, we have theoretical and experimental probability. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, this is very, very uh, important. All right, so here is our jar, and you can see we filled it up with some more letters. So we got uh, I, J, B, K, A, E, F, C, G, D, and H. Okay, so let's uh, entertain the question. What's the probability of me with my hand, if I could just pull in or pull out one um, uh, letter, what's the probability of me pulling out a J? Okay, well, you would express it this way, probability of J happening. Well, how many uh, time, How many ways can you get a J? Well, there's only one J here, right? There's not two J's or three J's. So obviously, if I had like 10 J's, like let's say a J here, a J there, a J here, then I'm increasing my chances, right, of getting a J. So I would, I have three ways, I can, or actually four ways I could get a J here. But because there's only one J, okay, 1j, I have one way that event can occur. Now, what's the total number of possible events? Well, I can get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There's 11 different uh, letters that I could possibly, the total uh, possible uh, letters I could pull out. So this is going to be 1 over 11, which is the same as the decimal point zero, uh, zero 0.0909. Zero nine. And then we multiply that by 100 so that will uh, be 9.09 percent approximately okay so the probability of me pulling out a j would be about 9.09 percent okay so theoretical probability is what we expect to occur using math so this right here is theoretical probability okay so you're like okay let's say we we're, we're going to run an experiment here and we're going to say all right um nine well, roughly nine percent of the time we should be pulling out a J, okay? That's theoretical. It's based upon what we expect to happen. But let's just think about it. Is there any guarantees that that's actually what's going to occur? No, not really, right? So that's why we have experimental probability. Now, experimental probability is what actually occurs during an experiment. So let's just see here, okay? If I was going to put my hand in here, okay, grab a letter, right? And let's say I was going to do this experiment 100 times, okay? Now, if 9% of the time, roughly 9% of the time, okay, uh, I, I run this experiment. In other words, I put it, I take a letter, grab one letter, I record it, and then I throw it back in a jar, keep doing it, and I'm going to do that 100 times. If 9% of the time, roughly 9% of the time, I would expect that I would have uh, nine times that I would have gotten a J, okay? Right? 9% of 100 times, hopefully you're with me on that math. So nine uh, times, if, I, if I'm doing an experiment, putting my hand in here, um, uh, grabbing a letter, I should get a J, right? Well, not really, right? This theoretical um, probability says this is what you should expect, expect, but is there guarantees? No, okay, what could happen? Um, uh, if I if I put my hand in here, okay, a uh, hundred times, well, maybe I get um, a, maybe I pull out a's here, a's, 
maybe I pull A's out 20% of the time. Maybe something weird is happening, right? I just keep pulling, I, like, I'm trying to mix this up, right, really good. And uh, everyone can kind of relate to what I'm talking about. You're like, boy, I'm not getting what I expect to happen, right? And maybe J's, I only pull out 2% of the time. But you're saying, well, theoretical probability tells me I should be getting J's 9% of the time. Well, there's a difference between theoretical and experimental, okay? But there is something very important that these two concepts are related to, okay? So I ran this experiment 100 times, and again, I only got J's 2% of the time. What's going on with my, you know, expectations here? Well, that's where we enter this really cool law, okay? And this is the law of large numbers, right? Very famous kind of concept in probability and not difficult to understand if you understand uh, theoretical and experimental uh, probability, okay? And of course, we just went over that. So what does this law say? It says, the more times an experiment is conducted, okay, the experimental probability will get closer to the theoretical probability. So let's read that again. The more times we run an experiment, okay, the experimental probability will get closer to the theoretical probability. So let's go back to our fancy jar example here. Okay, so I'm going to put my hand in here, boom, boom, boom. I'm going to look to get one letter. So probability of picking a J, okay, should be around 9%. That's theoretically what I expect. So if I run this experiment 100 times, and in fact, I only got J's like 3% of the time. Like, what's going on? Is probability broken? Mm, not quite. What if I run that experiment 100,000 times, okay? All right, now this is my, this is my uh, experimental probability. And it's, you know, I'm expecting around 9%, okay? So this is experimental and uh, this is theoretical. Well, 100 times my experimental came is way off from what I'm expecting, right? But if I do this ex experiment like way more, okay, like significantly more times, okay, we're talking about the law of large numbers. The more time you conduct this experiment 100,000 times, a million times, okay, our experimental probability is going to be very close to our theoretical probability. Okay, so this number is going to move closer uh, to the theoretical ex um, probability. Okay, so we're like, well, uh, you know, when you're we're talking about probability, um, probability really gets more accurate over the more times you conduct an experiment. Okay, and that is really the essence of a lot of what we're uh, you know study. And uh, probability. So the law of large numbers. This is really a big takeaway from this video. The more times an experimental or experiment is conducted, the experimental probability will get closer to that theoretical probability. And that's all the probability kind of math and stuff that we're learning. All these uh, different concepts. Okay. I have no idea how long this video video went. Probably a little bit more than 10 minutes. I'm sure it did. But I thought this was a pretty catchy title. Listen. Probability is an awesome uh, uh, topic, and as you get into more advanced complex uh, probability, if you if you uh, pursue studying it, and I definitely encourage you to do so, it can get a little confusing, and the math can get um, interesting, but it's an awesome uh, topic, and I would encourage you to learn more about probability, but already right now, you've definitely upgraded your knowledge of probability if you didn't know anything about the subject. If you like this video in some manner, I would certainly appreciate you smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, I would hope that you would uh, become a new subscriber. I already have hundreds of videos on my channel uh, that are uh, there for you. So if you like my teaching style, I have uh, a ton of resources. But my best stuff you'll find by following the links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time. And have a great day.